What's going on today, guys? It's Joe the Pro back at it again with another video. So today, before this video starts, please drop a like on this video, subscribe, hit the post notification bell. So today, what we're going to be doing, obviously, you can see the dirt bikes behind me. And uh, so a common question I get is, how do I keep my dirt bike so clean? So as you can see here, even this one, this was a 2001 PW80. So as you can see, besides the back fender here, it's the majority of it's pretty clean i i gotta repaint the swing arm but with with the 2020 here this is obviously in pristine condition i there's really not anything visible that can be um just distinguishing but uh so a common question I get is how do I keep these so clean? So honestly, it's pretty easy. In the next few clips, I'll show you some of uh, the cleaning stuff I use, how I do it, how long it takes, and so on and so on. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. All right, guys. So the first thing that I would recommend having to keep your bikes nice and clean is having a good pressure washer. Now, it does not... It absolutely does not have to be the certain one. It can be any brand. It can be electric. It does not matter at all. I just happen to have a Honda GCV 160, and it does the, it does a great job. You don't have to get the biggest, greatest one, most expensive one that they have. It really does not matter. You just want to have some pressure coming off of that nozzle to get all that mud off. Yeah, this thing does the job. I've never really had a problem with it. The only problem I've ever had with it is, uh, so there's... In here, there's a water pump in there to, that obviously sucks the water in to uh, squirt at your bike. So there's a pump in there, and I had it get seized one time. And But the only thing I had to do, I just uh, squirted some uh, WD-40 in there into the piston. There's a little piston in there, and it freed right up, worked great, never had a problem since. So definitely recommend having a pressure washer. Okay, guys, number two. So this is nothing really special, all you want. So after you do your initial spray down of your bike to get all the major mud spots off and so on, you're gonna wanna soap your bike down. Now, I actually do not have it in here, I think. I think it's in the house. But I have an attachment that goes on the end of the uh, pressure washer nozzle here. Um, it's actually, it's called a soap cannon or whatever. And it, puts a layer of soap all along the bike. And then usually what I do here, cause uh, you know, some, some of the spots like, so like where you have a few minor nicks in your bike, like right there, um, or like on, on any plastics that are really white or just anything it can be, uh, you're gonna wanna have a sponge, a toothbrush. I use the toothbrush, but the mainly for the chain. And uh, so you wanna, you wanna scrub your bike, and I usually put a little water in there too, just to, for extra soap and stuff, extra clean. And it does, it really does a fantastic job as you can see. Okay, so number three. Uh, so after you get done soaping your bike down, you get all the grime and stuff off of your chain. As you can see, this chain is in great condition. So you're gonna wanna rinse your bike off, at, obviously after you soap it. That takes literally five minutes, and you might even discover a couple other places that still have mud on them that you can get. But, uh, so after you get done rinsing that with the pressure washer, you, um, you know, you want to dry it off. Now, when I used to dry it off, I just have these, uh, fiber towels that I got from Walmart for, I think I got, like, a pack of ten of them for, like, 15 bucks or something. They're really cheap. That You have to have them. They do a great job uh, absorbing the water and drying it off. Or if you don't feel like getting those, you can just use a regular towel. Um, I have towels over here. I use the towels I use just to clog the air boot so no water gets in there. I'm getting a cover for it soon. Definitely recommend having a boot cover. So yeah, so you're going to want to have some towels and dry your bike off after you get done washing it. Okay, so um, another step here. So after you get done drying your bike off, you're going to want to have like some kind of polish if you want your stuff to shine. So as you can see, I mean, it looks brand new. Like, like look at that. So 
you want to have like some sort of wax. Uh, Maxima also sells something called SC1. Uh, I've, I've actually not had the opportunity to try it, uh, so I can't give my review of it. But this stuff works just as great. It's actually car wax. But I mean, as you can see, it does a really good job here. And uh, yeah, I even, so I usually use it on all the plastics. Um, I think I do the swing arm with it. Yeah, I do the swing arm with it. Um, fork guards. And uh, I do the metal on the handlebars. Uh, once in a while, I'll do the bar pad. And uh, yeah, so basically anything here that you think should have wax on it like i'll do a little bit on the exhaust guard keep that shining but uh yeah you can i mean you can really take this stuff anywhere okay so as you can see my seat cover is in great condition and that is thanks to this leather cleaner so when i'm washing my bike uh i have the seat off because i don't want because i because I think that the pressure washer could damage the leather. As you can see, I had a couple of mistakes here on the PW80 with it. And uh, so, yeah, you really don't want to have the pressure washer on the seat. If you do, make sure you're, you're staying about a foot away, 12 inches, and uh, you should be fine. But uh, after I get done cleaning the seat, I do it by hand with, like, rags. I throw this leather cleaner on. It really does a great job keeping that leather shined up. And it really makes a difference. All right, so here's something simple. So you get you get done waxing, you get done with your seat. So now you can uh, get your tires shined up. I actually did not do it after the last time I washed it. I should probably do that. But uh, I just get this uh, stuff from Walmart. It does a it does a great job when it's on there. Um, I mean, it's not a necessity but it would definitely make all the difference in making it look brand new. So I would recommend it, it does a great job. All right, so I forgot to mention, when you get when you get done washing your bike, you're gonna wanna dry off your chain and lube it as fast as possible to prevent your chain from rusting. So you guys could have guessed, I use Maxima uh, Chain Guard. Um, it really does a great job, as you can see, if I spin the wheel a little bit very tacky does a great job never had a problem with it also forgot to mention about that one guys uh so you're gonna want to well it doesn't have to be the i i just do it because it's nearby at the time but you're gonna want to put some kind of lube on your uh foot peg springs to keep those working nice and smooth as long as well as your uh kick or <laughs> kickstarter your shifting spring right there to keep that nice and smooth and uh, yeah, you just want to keep a smooth setup and it really makes a difference and it really makes your friends jealous. All right, so notice how nice my pipe looks here. It even shines a little and notice how there's little to no rust on it. And it's like that the whole way, even on the muffler, I think, yep. And uh, so what I do for that, so say there was a little bit of rust on there after you get done washing, which in most cases there is. What I use is take that off, some good old steel wool here. It works great. Um, I would recommend wearing some gloves with it because sometimes you get poked. When you get poked, it doesn't hurt unless you're a wuss. But anyways, so yeah, you can use steel wool on there. You can sand it if it's like terrible but uh, usually the steel wool works just fine. And then just to prevent it, you wanna put some WD-40 on there and it really makes a difference. All right, so I know some of you guys are probably gonna start looking at my engine cases here and seeing how shiny they are. Same thing on the other side here for the transmission. Now that is some shine. Um, so what I use here this is not a Scotch-Brite wheel. Scotch-Brite wheels definitely work better, but I just saw this at Walmart. It was labeled as a paint removing wheel, but I mean, I, I told myself I gotta try it and you can just see it does a great job. It does not leave the best finish in the world, but it's definitely better than having a, um, dull, a dull case. And it really brings out uh, character in the bike and I would definitely recommend doing that if you want your bike to look brand new like this.
All right, guys, so I'd also like to point out, so, uh, you know, before and after you go riding, you always have that thought in your head, did I forget anything? So to eliminate that thought going through my head, I made a post, a pre and a post ride checklist just to make sure you do not forget anything before you go on the trail. So you guys can screenshot this, write it down, whatever you need to do, but definitely um, check all these things before you go riding. So as you can see, before you go riding, just the basic stuff like tire pressure, um, the 15 PSI, that's for my bike. I cannot promise you that it's like that for yours. Um, so, but the chain slack, that's uh, usually three fingers from the middle of the swing arm. Clutch slack, I do a quarter width from inside the perch, from uh, the end of the lever to the perch. So uh, you wanna do that. You wanna obviously uh, check your coolant, make sure that it's up to the brim in there. Uh, gas, obviously, your engine oil, and bleed your front fork. So what that means is, uh, so on, this is only for inverted forks, by the way, so with the fork protectors. But anyways, so here there is a, so this screw that adjusts uh, actually how your fork performs. And then this screw, that uh, is the bleeder screw, which if you unscrew it all the way, it'll usually let a little bit of air out. And you wanna do that after each ride. So keep that in mind. So let's come back to the checklist here. So um, bleed your front forks. Obviously you wanna check your brakes to make sure they're working properly because you definitely need brakes on the trail or on the track. And uh, for yourself, full gear, water bottle, snack, clean goggles, you're ready to go. And when you get back, um, so that's how I wash my bike all in one checklist. So like I said before, you can screenshot this, do whatever you need to do to remember this. And yeah. Okay, guys, I hope that answered all your questions about how I keep my bikes looking brand new right off the showroom floor. One last look at them. And I hope I answered all your questions. And if I didn't, leave them in the comments below. And I'd be happy to try to answer them if I see them. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, Twitter, Instagram links in the description below. Drop a like if you liked it. And uh, please like, subscribe, and peace. Don't forget to do it like a pro. And see you guys in the next one.